Why it's so hard to change. My name's Malin and I've struggled a lot with change. When I was 14, I was first exposed to these ideas with self-help, a self-help book that my parents gave me. And I also listened, started listening to this podcast about mindset to help me with my soccer. And it exposed me to these ideas about creating your goals, creating your vision, trying to create a better life for yourself and change your life for the better. But I always found I struggled with it. I would often get caught in these spikes where I'd get excited, I'd learn something new, I'd learn this new technique or this training and I'd want to go and try it out. And for a while it would kind of work, but then I would slip back into my old habits and I wouldn't change. And I spent years, years and years, just repeating this cycle over and over again. And it didn't... And as it went on, it kind of reinforced this idea that, oh, maybe I can't change. And it kind of added to this doubt that was in the back of my mind. And I thought, maybe I'm not the type of person that can change. And this was like a really negative and dark thought that, that kind of came into my head. And it made me kind of want to search out more and see if there actually was some different answers out there. And I've tried a lot and it is possible to change, which is what I found now, if that's what you want to hear. And change is really difficult because first off, you have to be very aware and you have to be, you have to notice that you have to notice that you're not in the ideal situation where you want to be and you're not feeling the things that you want to feel and you're not experiencing life as you want it to and that you want something different. And that's kind of hard to see when you're stuck in this kind of, idea and mindset but I think for me when I was seeing all of these social media kind of portrayals of like this great life of these celebrities that were really high profile you know whether that was a great musician or a soccer player who dedicated himself to like training that sort of thing whether that was Kobe Bryant, Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo whatever I was kind of drawn to these high profile kind of achievers and that's one of the first problems that I had with changing was that I was comparing their external, how they looked, how they trained, how they presented themselves with my internal. So how they looked, what they, the results that they had, that's what I was comparing myself to with, but I don't know what their experiences were. I don't know how exactly they felt, what exactly they've been through, how hard they've worked to get there. And I kind of just expected, oh, if I just do what they do, then I'll feel how they do, how they present themselves and that it kind of work out and you know I'd just be I'd easily be able to be a famous person or something like that. I quickly realized from reality that that's couldn't be further from the truth. And I kept falling back and falling back. I would just get caught in these highs and then all of a sudden I'd have these lows. And it's not a very great way to live where you get hope, you try it out something and I would try so hard, or what I felt was so hard, and then I'd burn myself out, and then I'd stick, then I'd slingshot back to wherever I was. It's not a great experience. And one of the difficulties that I had with that was that my ego was attached to these ideas of what the greatness was, or what what I had to do to reach the top. And I could kind of see it and I could kind of see other people doing it, but I couldn't implement it. And I would try and implement too much. And my ego felt like it had to do all of these things to catch up to them, to reach to where they were, because I'm so far behind. There was a massive discrepancy between where they were and where I was and where I wanted to be. And so the ego just held me back because I was so hell bent on trying to do it all and trying to fix it all at once and trying to change it all very quickly. I didn't really have a long-term kind of mindset or vision. I just kind of wanted to change it now. I wanted to be someone different now. I wanted to achieve those things now and it never kind of worked out for me. And all of these experiences kind of reinforced my identities, like all of the past enforced these identities that I was having and these kind of thoughts and feelings that I was having, like all of the habits kind of informed that I was a lazy person, that I couldn't stick to anything, and that led me to a dark place like I've talked about before. You know, I felt very depressed. I often felt like I wanted to take my life or not, not be alive at all. 
And something beneficial that I got from Dan Coe was to create this anti-vision and just become clear on everything that you don't want and to see what actions you're taking, where that would lead you. And for me, where I was headed was I was going to continue in these highs then feeling low and feeling really bad. And then maybe eventually I would continue onto these fads, spend a lot of money on these kind of fads and these high kind of moments. And then I'd feel low because it wouldn't work. I wouldn't stick to it. And then I just continue in that pinballing around until eventually, you know, maybe I ended up actually taking my life because it got so bad. And even if I didn't do that, even if I didn't take my life and I continued on, I would, I could see myself losing respect more and more for myself, my body degrading, my <laughs> becoming skinny fat, you know, becoming, having a really fat belly, but then having skinny weak arms and just feeling frail, feeling weak living in a dank, stinky apartment, maybe getting into a, some sort of toxic or abusive relationship that's really manipulative and just makes me hate life even more. Working a casual job, you know, nine to five, just working away, working away each day, coming home and then just numbing myself with, with whatever I can, food, whatever's just easiest, whatever's cheapest, whatever tastes the best, watching movies, TV shows, playing video games, yeah, you know, you basically know where this is going to lead and that's not the life that I want and that's that's part of the life that I've lived and I saw myself, I could continue doing that and I already felt terrible from doing these things and I thought if I kept doing this for another two years, another year, ten years, I would feel absolutely horrible and it kind of helped me snap awake and kind of reflect and shift my perspective and this was really important for me to kind of reflect and look back and see where my actions were taking me, where they had taken me and where they were going to take me in the future. And this helped me shift kind of my perspective. And then from there, I kind of realized, oh, so what things do I want in my life? Well, I do want to be more confident. I do want to have confidence in my body. I do want to feel good about my body. I've always wanted to do a YouTube channel and I thought it'd be really great to delve into philosophy, self-help apply it to my life and try and teach it to other people and help other people. But then even further on from that, I won't talk about that in this video, actually, that's more of my vision. I'll go over that in a later video. I'll, t I'll stick to change. So I was ignoring the big picture and I wasn't becoming very aware. And once I became aware of that big picture and where I wanted to go, I could kind of decide, you know, what actions can I do? What's realistic? Because the start is always the hardest. Like everything is stacked against you. Your ego wants to do too much. You're used to doing all of these kind of habits that don't really serve you and that make you feel worse. Your identity is against you and you have to kind of change and shift that and your mind just revolts against it. And you get all these like kind of emotions coming in and like this imposter syndrome and all these things like, oh, do I actually have something to say on YouTube? Is this video actually helping people? Am I actually going to be able to come better at this? Maybe I should just stick back to whatever I was doing. But I kept in mind just this anti-vision of where that was going to lead me. And I was like, no way, no way am I going there. I'm, I don't want to feel that way again. So I'm just going to try and be as humble as I can, hold myself back and just take these, take each day step by step. And something that I found really beneficial was this idea from Dr. K from Healthy Gamer GG. And that was to think of your future self. Whenever you're going to make a decision, think of your future self. How will this benefit you? How will this affect you in the future? And that just kind of clicked something in my mind where I was like, oh, I didn't think of it like that. Like, I'm, I've am set up future Malin for this kind of situation. So how can I set up future Malin to be proud of what I did? And it kind of made me realize like, oh, I should clean my room because that I can do that now and I should do that when I see it needs to be done. There's washing that I need to hang out, so I'll go do that now, rather than putting it, putting the burden on and stacking this burden onto my future self and then just kind of feeling like, oh, I don't want to do this. Just get it done while you can because you'll make it easier for your future self and then you know, it becomes so much nicer. Like this just made me think yesterday, I did something, I was like, I did some washing up or something where I, I hang out my washing and I was just like kind of cleaning up and I'm like, oh crap, I've got to do, I've got to do my washing. And I looked out on the line and I had already folded. I was like, 
Oh God, Malin, you, you're such a great person. <laughs> so as I was saying, the start is always the hardest, but with these actions, you build up proof and identity for the self that you want to create. This is an idea from Atomic Habits, James Clear. You know, you're casting votes. Each habit is casting a vote for your future self, for who you want to be, for the identity that you want to create. And this takes time. And another trick from Atomic Habits is just setting up your environment to make it easier, to make it more effortless to be who you want to be and to do the actions that you want to do. But for me, I found it very good to frame it, to be aware of where my anti-vision was going to take me, of where that path was going to lead me and kind of help inform me of where I want to go and what I should and shouldn't be doing. So thank you for watching if you did, and I'll see you in the next video.